I call I call him the little fella. <laughs> yeah, I used to get a, a a call on occasion, and and my uh, secretary would say it's uh, Mr. Hanley on the phone. And I'd say, well, which one? <laughs> and she says from Staten Island, and I'd say, yeah, but which one? <laughs> because you, you, as you probably know, Jim Hanley yep. is a uh, commissioner of labor. <laughs> And even now, today, he comes and lectures for me at Columbia University. I have him and Basil Patterson at the same time. So people think that I'm very smart because I get these guys to come. But uh, the reason I wanted to be here is I explain to people who say to me, well, gee, you, you must be uh, a lot of time on your hands now. I said, well, no, not really, because I'm, and frankly, I'm more busy now than when I was in mayor. Because when I was in mayor, I had people to whom I could delegate things. <coughs> they would do things for me. Now, I, not the case. But I tell folks, I said, however, I don't do anything I don't want to do, and I don't go anywhere I don't want to go. Yes. And I am here because I love this guy. All right. I yeah. think he is terrific. But, but I, I, I am so fortunate that over the years I've had the good fortune to have a lot of friends who you know, stood by me and I can tell you without fear of contradiction there has never ever been a supporter or a friend who did more for me, worked harder, no matter what the opposition said, than Larry Hanley and I'm grateful. A very eloquent summary of what everyone who's trying to do some good in this world faces, and I think it's been particularly true in recent years in the labor movement. And I want to just thank everyone who's here this evening supporting Larry, uh, because the notion of someone who wants to make change so deeply and is so in touch with the grassroots, becoming the president of an international union, it's very powerful when you think about what that would mean for our city, our state, our country, for the labor movement. And, you know, Larry, to me, I first met him in a noble cause in 1989. And it was not a really great time to be the Staten Island coordinator for David Dinkins, and yet Larry <laughs> Hanley took on that job. And I got many an anguished phone call late at night from Larry. Uh, as he suffered the slings and arrows. Uh, but I can never remember a time in that fight or any other fight when Larry suggested anything but continuing to move forward. And he, uh, I won't say he's impervious to pain, but it's extraordinary how focused and committed and willing this guy is to keep doing whatever it takes to change things for the better. And I saw it in political campaigns, I saw it in labor struggles. Um, I think a lot of people in this room would agree that the future of the labor movement has to do with using the power of the movement more productively in the political process and getting back to organizing and improving on organizing victories of the past. And I can think of no one who understands that more than Larry and lives it and thinks it and breathes it and would know how to breathe life into the ATU, and to help strengthen the rest of the labor movement. This is how he thinks, this is what he wakes up in the morning thinking about, and with extraordinary integrity. And uh, I don't want you to think he is monk-like or ascetic. Uh, Larry uh, has a pleasant, uh, cynical sense of humor that he uses to grapple with the world around him. And he's one of those guys, remember what they used to say in 2004 with John Kerry and George Bush, which one would you rather have a beer with? And even though a lot of us wanted John Kerry to be president, we had to admit we'd rather have a beer with George Bush, potentially. Not me. Not you. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it would be interesting to have a beer with <laughs> Really weird, but interesting. But 
Larry is the kind of human being who you want to have the beer with, and you want to think together with, and you want to be in the struggle with. And anyone, anyone who watches his work can immediately tell he's for real in a time where I think we all need leaders who are going to inspire us and strengthen us just by their example. So I'm just so happy to be a part of this. This is going to be a moment that really changes things. And let's now bring it home for a